Good evening. Today's topic is deep. Yes. The parable yeah. of Adventism. Adventism. Okay, take us through. Yes. We are so grateful to the Lord. Very good. You know, actually, I've been waiting for this particular lesson to come on for long. Yeah. It's one of the lessons I like and I cherish it. The parable of Adventism. That's right. Greetings to our lovely viewers and listeners. Mm -hmm. um, special thanks also to the technical technical men at NS TV mm -hmm. and also home base. Home our base. home. Yes. Well. Greetings to my wife and um, all the team members across board. Mm -hmm. Once again, glory be to God. The parable of Adventism. That's right. Let me introduce it. It is coming from Matthew chapter 25, mm -hmm. verse 1 to 13. And it's about the parable of the ten virgins, of whom five were wise and five were foolish. As the Bible puts it. Yes, I begin to read from verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Jesus was speaking here. Okay. The second verse. And five of them were wise and five foolish. <laughs> verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And then the first four says, But the wise <laughs> took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, mm -hmm. they all slumbered and slept. Okay. Six, seven, eight. And at midnight, mm -hmm. there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Mm -hmm. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Mm -hmm. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Okay. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, okay. and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open was but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not okay 13 watch therefore for you know not the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh this is the parable i caption the parable of adventism that's right adventism in the sense that you are you have already explained it <laughs> these are people expecting the advent of the bridegroom. That's right. Now, let me ask a simple question. And I, I would expect our viewers to respond to the WhatsApp and the other uh, avenues. Why did Christ begin this parable with then shall the kingdom of God be likened unto? Meaning he has said something earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. In fact, of all the parables of Christ, so this is the only one with this difference. When you look at even the parable just after this one, mm -hmm. in verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. That's right. You look, you look to chapter 13, 44, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking a goodly pearl. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Mm -hmm. But when you come to Matthew chapter 25. He says, then mm -hmm. there were certain developments. Okay. Or there will be certain developments which will precipitate into the parable of the ten virgins. Okay. Now, let me explain the Adventism of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know in Matthew 24, you see, Matthew 25, Matthew 24 and 25 were said on the same day. Okay. Yeah. Now, in Matthew 24, the disciples were coming out of the temple with Christ. Mm -hmm. And then they drew his attention to the building of the temple. We read 24, 1, 2, 3, and then Titus 2, 13. In 24, 1, 2, 3, when Jesus departed out, the disciples came to him, showing him the temple. And then in verse 2, Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon the other. The other that's right. That shall not be thrown down. Mm -hmm. That was Jesus' answer to 
the assessment which they made. Then in the third verse, even while he sat upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. the disciples came to him privately. But Matthew will tell the disciples, but actually were Peter, James, and John. Okay. Yeah. The theologians called the inner circle. <laughs> they went to Christ. Now, tell us when this thing shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, okay. and of the end of the world. You see, the, these things was referring to the temple of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and its destruction. Okay. So they were demanding from Christ, he should tell them when the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple shall be. And then the sign of his coming. Okay. And then on the end of the, end of the world. Mm -hmm. Now when they said, tell us when, the when that indicates time. So when you listen to the conversation carefully, Christ has been stressing on the day and the hour. The day and the even hour. in finishing okay. the parable of ten verses, he still concluded with the, the day, day and, and the hour. hour. Okay. God, the disciples demanded to know. Now there are two things: the signs and the time concerning the destruction of Jerusalem, <laughs> and then the signs and the time concerning the coming of Christ and the end of the world. Mm -hmm. These two should well be understood because these are two separate events, mm -hmm. but having a similar answer. Okay. Now, in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, mm he -hmm. says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, those who are looking for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. these are the people we call Adventists. Okay. So, when we say the parable of Adventism, mm -hmm. We are talking about a parable that talks about the people the who are people looking forward to the second coming of exactly. Jesus Christ. You could be a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. You could be from any other denomination. Okay. If you are expecting the coming of Christ, mm -hmm. then you are called an Adventist. Okay. Yes. So they should mark them down. They should mark that one down. Now, in both, in both cases, when we talk about the destruction of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and of the end of the end of the world, we will use three key tests okay. to explain. Mm -hmm. In the first place of Matthew 24 to the sixth, where he said, But of that day and hour mm -hmm. knoweth no man, nor the angels of heaven, but my father only. Mm -hmm. Whether it refers to the destruction of Jerusalem is the same thing, the day and the hour. And whether it will be referring to the end of the world when Jesus will come is the same thing, the day and the hour. No oh, man no. knows. That's yes. right. So this text here applies to both the destruction of Jerusalem and then the coming of Christ. Jesus Christ, okay. Understand? That day and the hour, no man knew it. And I wouldn't even advise or even think of praying that the, the Lord should reveal should that reveal day. The <laughs> no, 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 it's not necessary. <laughs> yes, it is not necessary knowing. That's right. And I will explain why it is not necessary mm -hmm. knowing. The key point, which is very important to know, is Luke 21 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, mm -hmm. then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Okay. Now, on one breath, the same person says the day and the hour no man will. That's right. And then on another breath, he's telling you that even though you don't know the day and the hour, the when you see, sign. yes, when you see Jerusalem compassed with army, then know that that day and the hour which has been unknown to you, is drawing near. Wow. So the best thing to know, or the critical thing to know, to understand in this matter, is when the armies surround Jerusalem. Or what to watch out for. Watch out for. That's what you should necessarily watch out for. And when you see that event, mm -hmm. then Christ gives what you should do next. He says, then let that which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let them not that are in the countries Enter therein too. This is for the destruction of Jerusalem. That's right. And then when he had finished that, <laughs> he proceeded or he, he went forth to give the sign of his coming. You know the disciples demanded that. That's right. And the sign of his coming, he said in verse 25, <laughs> and there shall be signs in the sun <laughs> and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. <laughs> when he gave that the sign, then he said, and when these things begin to come to pass, mm -hmm. 
Then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Okay. So you see that on, uh, with, with the destruction of Jerusalem, he gave them a sign. Yes. That they should look up for. Mm -hmm. And this time he is giving another sign. Another sign. Oh, okay. Understand. So at the destruction of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the sign was that when they see Jerusalem compassed with armies, okay. they should know that destruction is near. That ended, that ended about the signs of Jerusalem. That's right. And then he came forward one step in verse 25 <laughs> and said, There shall be signs that sign the moon and the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexities. Wow. When we see this sign, <laughs> we should also know that the end is near. Our redemption is drawing near. So this and, and who, who is, is foolish. foolish. Now we will do a little grammar here. <laughs> you see, there is. When we come to the methodology of interpreting the scripture, there is one thing which is very key and very important. We have, in, in Bible hermeneutics, in trying to you know, uh, explain the Bible, there is a method. Okay. We call it the grammatical, or we call it the historical grammatical interpretation. Okay. When we say historical grammatical interpretation, it means that you should know the history of where you are reading. From okay. the Bible, <laughs> you should understand the history, history very well, and then you also understand the grammar. When you have these two, <laughs> with the prayers and then the grace of God, you should be able to understand what you are reading and interpret it well. Exactly. Now, many times I have been trying to, I have been doing work to quote from the original language, the biblical language. Sometimes referring to the Greek, sometimes referring to the Hebrew. Hebrew. Yes. Because when you are reading from the translated versions, mm -hmm. yes, they are good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's very important in matters like this to go back to look to the biblical language that was used. Okay. And then go for the meaning. Now, when Christ said five were wise and five were foolish, mm -hmm. in the Greek, the word translated into the English wise is, i put it on the screen though. Yeah, it is pronounced phronimo. Mm -hmm. Phronimo, that is somebody who is thoughtful. Understand? Like yes. the wise ones. Yes. Be observant and thoughtful. He, he observes and then he thinks about it and takes decision. Now, this does not apply to any ordinary... Can we say they are proactive? Yes. Yes. It's also... It's also yes. Mm -hmm. You can bring that one in. Okay. Because these people are very discreet. Now, this wise here refers only to the understanding of the scripture. You understand? Wow. Yes. We are referring to when it comes to the understanding of the scripture mm -hmm. and taking decisions based upon your understanding, this is where the wise comes in. Wow. It does not refer to any other field but the word of God. And then you know what I'm Yes. So you can be a great scientist. Yes. Who has invented a lot of things very well. That you are being praised all over the world. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know the scripture. Yes, you are not wise. That is where the foolish one, the foolish ones come. So that was the next thing I was going to Ooh, talk okay. about. Now the fool, which Christ mentioned here, <laughs> is also called morals. Morals is somebody who is dull or stupid mm -hmm. in accepting scriptural evidences or spiritual things. Christ was not addressing any ordinary man or addressing the academic world. Okay. No. Understand. So when he says the kingdom of heaven. It's like also, or when he said, then shall the kingdom of heaven then, because there will be certain developments <laughs> which will produce these two classes of people waiting for the Lord. Okay. So when those events are taking place, <laughs> then the two classes of people expecting the coming of their Lord will be formed. Because one group will be very thoughtful <laughs> and very discreet to absorb and understand what the signs are telling them. Okay. The other ones will be dull and stupid. You know, that, that stupor will tell upon them as if they should assert it or not. They will be doubting the evidences given to them. They could be intellectually apt. Okay. Yes. They, they can be the best pilots, the best engineers, the best physicists. We agree. When it comes to the academic field, <laughs> yes, they can be the high gurus of the pen. We don't have problem with them. Okay. But when you bring them into the Bible, <laughs> that's where the problem is. Yes. Because they find it difficult to just accept simple truth. That's why the Bible calls them morals. They are fools. 
Oh, no. no surprise. The Bible says, mm -hmm. if you know the scripture from your childhood, yes, it will make you wise. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the scripture, it doesn't matter who you are in society. Yes, you are not wise. Huh. You remember when, after the resurrection of Christ, mm -hmm. when he met those disciples on the road to Emmaus mm -hmm. in in Luke twenty four. You know he used that word that they say, "Ye fools, mm -hmm. slow of heart mm -hmm. to understand what the prophets have said." Okay. Yes, that's where the foolishness lies. See, when even even those people, when you look at the Greek, he used the word anetos. Mm -hmm. Yes, those who, these are people who eventually accepted the truth. Okay. But these morals. This, I mean, translated the fools, mm -hmm. they will never accept it. They will always be dull and stupid mm -hmm. when it comes to understanding or accepting events, fulfilling Bible prophecy. It doesn't matter how best you try to, oh, it doesn't it matter, and make it, up, it does not matter. You understand? When you read, let me read something Matthew 7 24. Mm -hmm. When Christ says, Therefore, whosoever hears the sayings of mine, mm -hmm. right. And do with them. <laughs> there are two things here. Mm -hmm. Those who hear the sayings of mine and do with them, I will liken him unto a wise man. That word wise is the phronimo. Oh, okay. Understand? Somebody who understands mm -hmm. the scriptures. You understand? And implement them exactly. accordingly. You see? He acts upon what he has read. And then in verse 26, he says, And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine <laughs> and do with them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man and that's the morals though and there is one common thing here yes both heard the word yes they both heard but the ability to put it into practice is the key okay now the events will explain it better hmm. so you see it doesn't matter when somebody is clever you know he is gifted um he can rattle very well eloquent eloquent it doesn't come it doesn't play in here that person cannot be said is wise mm -hmm. let us explain it much more <laughs> the last sign which christ gave the disciples was in luke chapter 21 verse 20. Mm -hmm. it says when ye shall see jerusalem compassed with Christ, army mm -hmm. then know that the source in the rough part is near now they should check britannica encyclopedia because i picked this date the dates on the screen i pick it from the encyclopedia okay in ad 66 on the Jewish calendar, <laughs> there is a man they call Tishri, which coincides or which relates to our November. Okay. Tishri is part of November and part of December. <laughs> now, on the 30th day of Tishri, <laughs> AD 66, <laughs> which happens to be our November 17th, was the day General Titus <laughs> came to surround Jerusalem. When that happened, <laughs> it fulfilled the prediction of Christ, which he gave in AD 31, wow. meaning about 35 years ago, <laughs> the event has taken place. When he shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. So, something you, visible. You understand? This is not spiritual. Yes. Thing. So, Christ has said it. <laughs> it is written down. <laughs> now, the event has taken place. <laughs> so, you are using the event happening to interpret the scripture. Or wow. interpreting the scripture in the light of the event happening. That's, That's what we right. call present truth. Mm -hmm. So your inability <laughs> to apply the events to the science to, to the scripture, the events come to the science of the time. That is where your foolishness comes in. Wow. They will be sluggish. <laughs> you know, trying to reinterpret it, rewrite history, and they'll be waiting for further signs, and that sign will never come. Wow. The wise, when they saw it. <laughs> They knew that this was a sign Christ has said. So when this man came, the people of um, Celsius and his army, when they came, they came on the 30th of um, Tishri and then left on the feet of the next man, which they call his van. So they spent five days. Just about. Around within the walls one week. of Jerusalem. Yes. Just within one week. In our time, we will say they came on 8th and November 17th mm -hmm. and left on twenty and left on the 22nd of November. Just about five days. Understand? Okay. When they came, they surrounded the city, all right. Everybody heard it. Everybody saw it. <laughs> Whether wise or foolish, you saw it. The people left. Now the Bible says, when you see the sign, even though you don't know the day and the hour, you don't know the day and the hour, <laughs> but that sign will trigger the day and the hour for you to know that it is near. Wow. You understand? So... This is how we interpret the Bible. The event has taken place. Mm -hmm. 
Look at the event, compare it with the scripture. It both tallies. Then the script that the prophecy is fulfilled. So you act upon what you have been told. Mm -hmm. So those people who saw the sign and believe it, mm -hmm. they acted upon it. So they began leaving the city. Wow. You understand? So when the soldiers left off, mm -hmm. they will quickly be leaving the city one by one. You see, that was when Christ told us mm -hmm. that two women will be lying, that one will be taken, one mm -hmm. will be left. Some will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. And then our brothers are using for rapture. rapture they misinterpret it. <laughs> yes. Thank God Donald Trump is going to be a rapture. Now we don't hear them again. That's right. Trump is going. Fine. Mm -hmm. In those days, mm -hmm. the wives were leaving the city one by one. So they left. AD, the, the rest of AD 66, 7, 68, 69, they left. Until AD 70. 70. April. A longer period. Yes. God gave them four silent years. Wow. Made sure the angels were in control. <laughs> for people to leave understand mm -hmm. so it is 17 april <laughs> our april which corresponds to their first month of the year Nisan, Nisan, that's right they came to celebrate their passover because they have rejected christ they were still repeating the celebration of the passover not knowing oh so when they came in suddenly general titus appeared he came in in april <laughs> AD 70 <laughs> surrounded the city never went back never retreated until september so you are talking of the whole of April, May, June, July, August, September. Food was not going, mm -hmm. water was not going. Mm -hmm. You ate what was left in the city mm -hmm. and that was all. So it became a matter of survival of the fetus. So by September, the strongest had become weak. Wow. Yes. So when they entered in, I mean, the, the slaughtering was very You don't have the strength easy. You don't have the strength. them. Yes. And that was when the temple was burned down wow. and the prophecy was fulfilled that one stone shall not be left upon the other. Now, even though Matthew 24 verse 36 said that that day and the hour no man knoweth, mm -hmm. the wise saw the event that opens up that particular verse that even though we don't know, mm -hmm. but this is the key that asks us to leave the city. So they left. In fact, Jesus is so kind to us. Yes. Now, those who understood that event mm -hmm. and applied it to scripture, mm -hmm. the Bible says they are the wise virgins. So when Christ says, then shall when this development happens, mm -hmm. then shall the kingdom of God be like unto ten virgins who went to meet the bridegroom. That's when we can draw the line. That's when you can draw the line. You just draw the line. This is the yastic. That when the soldiers came in, mm -hmm. then it has triggered Matthew twenty four, Matthew twenty five, verse one. Mm -hmm. We shall see who is ready and who was not ready. <laughs> now, in 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 Christ's giving of the signs of the times, when he has said this, that of the strife in Jerusalem, then he connected it with our time. So you see that in, in Luke chapter 21 verse 20, when he said, when Jesus Jerusalem come past, 21 he says, flee to the city. And 22 he says, for these days be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written shall be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Trouble will be upon the people, they shall be carried out. He carried them through unto 24. Mm -hmm. And that finished the in Jerusalem. Just no sooner had he finished saying what was in verse 24 than he raised verse 25 that there shall be signs in the sun, mm -hmm. in the moon, and in the stars. Now, you see, Bible readers and interpreters and pastors and every teacher or preacher must understand that there is verse 24 of Matthew 21 mm -hmm. and the beginning of verse 25 of Matthew 21. They it's don't just different follow different issues of yes, they don't just follow each other. Mm -hmm. Matthew 21 verse 24 ends the prophecies of the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay. And then verse 25 begins the prophecies of the end of the world. Between these two verses, there is a long period of time. Be in, in these long periods, we have the signs of the times fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Farming, war, uh, pestilence, moon, earthquakes. Yeah, earthquake. all kinds of are happening. Until you get to verse 25. When you get to verse 25, it says, There shall be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars. Mm -hmm. When those signs begin to happen, verse 26 says, men's heart will be failing them for fear. That's right. A place. You understand? Looking after those things which are coming. Mm -hmm. Because the next verse says, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Then we shall see the Son of Man coming. So the coming of Christ is linked with verse 25. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the signs in verse 25 will just be like the signs Christ gave to disciples in the destruction of Jerusalem. I put... Um, wow. Yes, I put a shot on the screen to be there in a moment. Now, to the Jews, he gave them Luke 21, verse 20, when they see Jerusalem come past. When he comes to the Gentiles, he gave verse 21, 25, the signs, the sun, the moon, and the stars. They are the same. Now, the wise 
in Matthew 25. And the foolish will be developed when the science of Luke 21 verse 25 begins to be fulfilled. Wow. When the events happening around the globe begin to fulfill what is written there. Mm -hmm. And Christians of all classes, you understand, mm -hmm. fail to read the signs and interpret them in the light of the scripture, they are foolish virgins. Wow. It doesn't matter whether a lecturer, you hold your PhD, a pastor, oh, a bishop, the Bible says they are foolish. So that your, fool, your foolishness I don't mean you are senseless. Mm -hmm. You can be as smart as the word smart. If you don't preach the current message you know, if there is if there is not that agency in your preaching you are just teaching about you are a foolish person so you see what do you want to know a foolish man <laughs> i'm not talking the sense of foolish in our in our language the full a foolish person in the sense of the bible from the bible's perspective just listen to the person <laughs> he could be a pastor <laughs> holding the highest you know degree <laughs> fine if he doesn't apply the current event to scripture he is causing the people to sleep Simple. So, preaching per se, you have not done anything. The delivery, what you are delivering to the people, will determine what you are saying, determine whether you are wise or you are a fool in, in the light of the Meaning scripture. you, the preacher, has to understand the scripture very well. Very well. So that you will know what you are telling the people, so yes. that you will not mislead them. That is why he said, when ye shall see all these things come to pass, know that what? It is near. So when you know that the coming of Christ is near, mm -hmm. your actions will tell. You understand? Yes. Now, mm -hmm. we look at the last sign, <laughs> Matthew 21, 25, when he said there shall be signs in the sun, mm -hmm. in the moon, and the stars. This is our last sign for this generation. Wow. Now, the signs in the sun are referred to four international um, agencies. <laughs> they are on the screen. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, okay. United States, mm -hmm. National Oceanic and Atm Atmospheric Administration, mm -hmm. United States, Hadley Center Climatic Research Unit, UK, mm -hmm. and then you have the Hadley, you have the Berkeley Earth Center, California. Mm -hmm. Now these agencies were resourced. They have come out that they have detected changes in the suns or the Earth temperature as a result of the sun's heat that wow. that's what we are being told and the sun is mentioned here very well christ told us that there shall be signs in the sun he mm -hmm. said this in ad 31 now there is a graph on the screen mm -hmm. beginning from 1880 now this is coming from the four agencies that we've mentioned that's right nasa noah the berkeley and the Halley. now they are saying that from the year 2000, mm -hmm. the Earth's temperature is rising and at record levels. That's right. It doesn't go down. It doesn't go down. It keeps on rising. Yes. We have never witnessed the heat mm. that we are witnessing in our day and age. It has never been witnessed before, especially from the year 2000. You see the first video mm -hmm. which we heard, the Earth's temperature anomaly. Mm -hmm. Those scientific institutions, NOAA, NASA, and co, they brought out what is on the screen, mm -hmm. the temperature of the Earth before or yeah, and before the pre before the pre-industrial levels. Mm -hmm. From 1850, they read that the temperature of our planet was about wow. minus two. Wow, it was okay. Mm -hmm. But by the time we go to about, we go to 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. from minus two to plus two. Wow. And you, you, you saw the change. Mm -hmm. That was the heat. And they are attributing this to what they call climate change. The That's climate right. is changing. Mm -hmm. They also call global warming. Now, nobody had thought of this. Mm -hmm. And I said that, they've said they've noticed this since the past 20 years, from the year 2000, had been the the apex of it. The, the last decade mm, of the world. Yeah, in the last two decades, yeah. Have seen you know record heat at its record levels. Mm -hmm. So the lady who spoke in the second video mm -hmm. mentioned eleven fifteen in the morning and she was saying crazy. This was as a result of fire outbreaks. The sun becomes so hot and then it ignites fire. 
it wasn't somebody who was going to look for rat. No, 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 no. And after catching the rat, yes. it did not quench the fire. Yes. Thank God, it is not happening in Ghana, in mm -hmm. parts of Africa. Okay. Because there will be excuses. The Pamela Tapes would have. Yes, there will be excuses. <laughs> be victimized. But this is United States, Australia, Europe, and Co. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even places where, you know, the temperatures are very cold. Mm -hmm. Those things are happening there. Understand? I will, I will skip the third video for the purpose. Mm -hmm. And then we proceed. Now, um, production can bring us back to the slice. Mm. There is this general in Israel, they call the Jerusalem Post. Mm -hmm. It also brought um, a news item, 30th of September 2020. And it read that climate change goes way beyond an inconvenient truth. Okay. The climate is, is disturbing us now. And they said 19 of the 20 warmest years. All have occurred since 2001. Wow. Understand? So from the year 2000, 2001 to our day, to our time, has been the hottest in Earth history. Mm -hmm. Now when the sun shines like that, and uh, it flames, mm -hmm. you know, causes fire outbreaks here and there, that is not the only thing. Christ said that when the sun begins to give the sign, he says the sea and the waves roaring. Mm -hmm. We explain that in a moment. In the beginning of creation, mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 1, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, especially in verse 2, when he says the earth was violent and uh, there was water all over the surface of the earth, right? That's verse 2. Mm -hmm. And then verse 9 and 10 says, God spoke and then he commanded the waters to gather to one side, which he called the seas. And then in Job chapter 38, verse 30, mm -hmm. The waters which the Lord commanded to gather at one place, he said he used his word to <laughs> freeze the waters. Okay. You understand? Now, that has been frozen mm. so that the dry land appeared. Mm -hmm. So when we are reading the Bible and it says, and the earth was out form and void, and darkness was from the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. These waters is what we call the seas. So when the Lord, by his word, commanded the waters to go to one side, Mm -hmm. Call them seas, then he frees the sea, a large chunk of the seas were frozen. Aye. We are almost there. And you see, don't worry about who is preaching. The delivery, the sermon the person is preaching will tell you the man is sleeping or not. So when you are delivering a, a sermon which is not linking, which is not causing that awakening, mm -hmm. you are causing your, your, your listeners to sleep the more. So you become you know, a, sleep, a, a, a preacher man who is sleeping. Mm -hmm. You become a sleeping preacher. And then what proceeds out of your mouth, because it is, you know, intellectually polished, mm -hmm. which will eventually lead a person to sleep and to slumber. But when the person understands the signs of the times, he gets awakened. That is not Jerusalem. When the Pharisees and the scribes were cooling the people, oh, calm down. This is the city of David. Nothing will happen to it. Stay in here. The people are gone. So, so they, 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 they understood the, what the priest and the process was and they stayed in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But the wise, they sent out of the city at that sign. This is what we are saying. So we are saying that what the world is now calling climate change and global warming is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So Christians should not be, 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 I mean, be trapped into it. It's a sign for us to get out because we are almost home. So there should be that agency mm -hmm. to warn the world the sun of the coming of Christ. Look at how the events are happening. In fact, next week we will. We, I hope by next week the system will be okay so that the videos can be played. But why would we have the LGBT centers marriage around this side mm -hmm. when the climate is changing? Mm -hmm. Why ecumenism? Mm -hmm. Have they asked themselves mm -hmm. why the other natural disasters all happening? You know, and uh, the within, world coming yeah. together to fight climate change, yes. global warming. Why have they sit down to analyze all those things? Understand? So when it's like that, the Bible calls you foolish virgins. You are not applying the scriptures to current events, interpreting the Bible mm -hmm. in the light of current events. Whoever doesn't doubt that, that person is sleeping. It doesn't matter the eloquence the person displaying on TV, on radio, mm -hmm. in the church houses, or our places. If that agency of the return of Christ is not part of your delivery, you are just preaching the sleeping sermon. Wow. That's how it is. But even if I'm surprised, we have a lot of pastors today than ever. 
Yes. The question is, don't they have the Holy Spirit? The Bible don't give them the true interpretation of the, the Bible. The Bible says, and when the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So there are there are pastors, there are evangelists, there are all those people. Since five were wise and five were foolish, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps on. The oil is the spirit of God, causing us to in that, to understand the Bible. So if we don't interpret the Bible accordingly, you know, when Christ was going, he says, when you see these things, know that it is near. Mm -hmm. So yours is to look at the events which is happening around you, compare them to the scripture. This is all we need to know. This is all about the Bible. A virgin shall conceive and give you a, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. A, sign. a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a baby. And he says, he shall bring forth a son and shall be called Emmanuel. So all you need to know is that has a virgin conceived? Yes or no? Yes, it came to pass. Is she coming from Nazareth? Yes, it came from there. Was the child born a male child? Yes. I said this. You don't have the scripture. Say there shall be signs and sun. Are we feeling the heat of the sun? Yes.